Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe. If you can believe it, it is schedule release day. We are recording this on August 15th. It is Thursday. That means it is the official day where the entire NBA gets their schedule for the upcoming 2024-25 season. So we had to come into the studio and break down all the key dates, all the highlights, everything you need to know going into this next season. Yeah, we had a bunch for you around the draft. Yeah. We kind of previewed Summer League. And then there was this nice hiatus that everybody had some time to get away. And I feel and like now, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, well, you know, you had a, a little trip that you went on Paris in Paris. I know, that was a, that was crazy. The funniest part was telling people my name in Paris <laughs> and then registering that my name is actually Paris and I'm in Paris. I, I took 27 years. We finally got there. You got there. <laughs> finally and, got there. And you were there during the Olympics. Did you happen to bump into Shay or Lou while they were playing for Team Canada? You know, Paris is such a big city. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't actually bump into them, but I did see their their counterparts in beach volleyball nice. going to work. Okay. The shout out to the Canadian women's beach volleyball team came, got silver. I, was, I got to see that in person. I was very, very happy <laughs> for our Canadian neighbors. You know, the athlete world is, is small. Maybe there's a chance that maybe. they all know each other in some way or shape or form. So maybe Shay and Lou were there with you in spirit or something. You know, like and that. shout so, out to Shay yeah. and Lou representing Team Canada Amazing. out there yeah. in Paris and, and really doing a great job out there. Yeah, they they were them. They you were them. I mean? Like Shay <laughs> did his thing, um, was really impressive. Canada did not, you know, uh, mm -hmm. make it all the way. Um, but uh, and Lou obviously was, you know, locked down Lou as we as we know him to be. Um, but that leads us to this moment, which yes, is it does. schedule release. 2024, <laughs> 25 season is coming at you. And you know that those guys who have been putting in the work during the offseason, guys like Shay and Lou who are playing internationally during the offseason, they all say those moments help them bring their best game, put their best foot forward during the regular season, which is what all this is for. Yeah. So let's dive in some key dates, some highlights that you need to know about this schedule. First things first, how about that season opener? October 24th. Mark your calendar. It's going to be on the road. The Thunder are going to face off against the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic on October 24th. Yeah, I mean, hitting it right away. Yeah. Division rival, one of the best teams in the Western Conference, two of the best teams uh, from last season. Uh, but the Thunder knows, you know, you got to build from the start. Right. And that game one is the start. There's no carrying over any nope. of the victories from last season. Uh, there's no, hey, these were two squads that, you know, we're, we're duking it out for the number one seed. Yeah. All of that is out the window. These teams... They've got to build their seasons from this from scratch from the start, and that is going to be quite an environment to do so in. Yeah. Obviously, Denver a very tough place to play. Yep. OKC's had some great experience there. Um, just last year, had some really nice victories, but again, can't carry any of that over. Got to be able to hit the ground running. And what's interesting is it starts a two game road trip for yep. the Thunder to start the season. Going to start out in Denver, then head out to Chicago. Funny <laughs> enough, play against the Chicago Bulls, and then come back to OKC on the second night of a back to back for their home opener on October 27th. That's a Sunday and the Thunder's going to kick off their home regular season against the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, always great that moment where Thunder fans here at Paycom Center get a chance to see their guys run out That's to the right. floor for the first time. Of course, uh, some newcomers, Alex Caruso, Isaiah Hartenstein, those guys will get a chance to feel that Paycom Center love in full effect in the regular season for the first time that night. Second night of a back-to-back, -back, yeah. third game in four nights. That's tough. Thunder fans, we're going to need you loud and proud there that night. That's We're right. going to need those barks big time on that Sunday night. It is going to be a yeah. really, really fun atmosphere inside of Paycom Center. I can only imagine this, this yeah. crowd seeing their team on their floor for the first time in the regular season. It's going to be electric. Now, let's move ahead to November here because okay. there's a lot to point out here. First of all, the longest homestand of the season, that takes place in November. Six games from November 8th, to November 17th. And it it's all caps off with a rematch against the Dallas Mavericks on November 17th. Yeah, the Thunder's gone for the entirety of Thanksgiving week. So this yeah. is a nice little Thanksgiving appetizer for you all. <laughs> you have six straight games at home uh, to watch this Thunder team play, kind of getting into that early season lather, that yep. rhythm. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, jumping into uh, November right before Halloween mm -hmm. is uh, that game against the San Antonio Spurs. That's, yes. that's going to definitely be like a, a highlight game there, national yep. television game um, in, in OKC. So that'll be really fun for 
this Paycom Center crowd to get to show off to the entire world uh, what they're like and then really kick off that month of, of November yeah. where the Thunder can try to you know make some hay at home. Obviously, you got to uh, play well on the road and at home in order to be a good team in this league. The other big element of November is the beginning of the NBA Emirates yes. Cup. Yeah. And this is what's previously been known as the in-season tournament, this year known as the Emirates NBA Cup. And then the Thunder, all of that group play, that starts in November. And just a little bit of a refresher for those who might not remember from last season, the entire league, all 30 teams were broken up into three groups from the West and three groups from the East. The Thunder is in West Group B, and that group, it's it's a pretty stacked yeah. group. It is pretty tough. It includes the Phoenix Suns, the San Antonio Spurs, the Utah Jazz, and the LA Lakers, and of course, the Thunder. And so the Thunder's going to play those teams one time throughout, throughout the month of November and one game in December yep. before whether or not they advance into the knockout round. Yeah, so Phoenix and Utah, they'll play here in Oklahoma mm-hmm. City and um, uh, the Lakers and, and Spurs, they yep. will play on the road. Those games all factor into whether the Thunder makes it to that um, the Emirates NBA Cup yeah. quarterfinals. And that all plays out in December. That second week of December is when that gets rolling. And I know we all remember the in-season tournament last year where you know they had the New Jerseys, yeah. the fun courts, and really it kind of created this really fun middle of the season tension that a, a lot of the NBA and the league was looking for. And it was really fun to be a part of. And you remember point differential is a factor oh, in these key. games in terms of seating. And the Thunder had a really nice approach last year of mm-hmm. just like, hey, We are playing each game in front of us just like any other game. Um, But you could definitely, they could learn from the noise and the stakes and like how to handle that type of pressure. It's a different environment. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. and as something Mark Dagnall always says is like, you don't want development to happen in a vacuum. Exactly. You need there to be all sorts of different contexts for players and um, the staff even to sort of have to navigate and make right. sure that they're still on their A game. A variety of experiences always right. bodes well for really strong development in the words of Coach Dagnall. So that brings us to December. And if you look at the Thunder's calendar, you'll notice a stretch of days there that are unscheduled at this point. And obviously that is pending the outcome of the Emirates NBA Cup, whether or not teams will advance to the knockout round or whether they will be assigned to more regular season games. Yeah. And so of course that all depends on what happens (laughs) in the NBA Cup. Um, Did a little bit of homework on this. And if the Thunder does not make the quarterfinals, uh, their away possibilities would be Dallas, the Lakers, the Phoenix Suns. Okay. Their home game possibilities would be the Spurs, the Warriors, the Kings. Okay. So we will see how all that shakes <laughs> okay. out. None of that may come into fruition if the Thunder makes it into the quarterfinals. Yep. They may still play one of those teams if they make it into the quarterfinals. Which is you just never know. <laughs> yeah. This is so interesting. Yeah. And as we learned last year, the teams that make it to the NBA Cup Championship, 80 three games in their regular season. Is that right? That's right. The, yes. the, so the, the math is just like, yeah, it we're, throws we're not you really off a sure little bit. How to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot to deal with. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of December. Another key point here is that the longest road trip of the season, only four games for yeah. the Thunder. And in seasons pr- prior, it's been about five games on average for the longest road trip. So four, not, not quite as bad. daunting. Yeah. Exactly. And so that'll be November 25th through December 1st. And that's during that Thanksgiving stretch there. Yeah. So you got that stretch you got another stretch in january mm-hmm. just to jump ahead a little bit um you know following the thunder's annual new year's eve game That's this right. year it'll be against minnesota um you know of course always at home at paycom center to ring in the new year but then you know shortly after that one of those east coast road trips in january too yeah. that's another four gamer the thing to look at when you look at the schedule for the thunder is these stretches not just of the four game road trips mm-hmm. but what comes maybe right before or right after that and Good sometimes point. you'll you may notice you know okc the thunder will come back to okc for one game and then bop right back out on yeah. the road too those are tough stretches those are ones that you're going to you know want to put yeah. kind of in the back of your mind is like hey this is some time to recognize these guys are going through a grueling portion of the schedule where you might be home for 36 hours and then you're turning right back right. around and getting on the road again. Those home road, road home back-to-backs, yeah. those always are so sneaky, especially when you get to that midway point in the mm-hmm. season. You've already played 41 games up to yeah. that point, and now you got to hit the ground running either direction. So you mentioned that New Year's Eve game. That game is actually part of a larger five-game homestand for the Thunder. Right. One thing to point out, that homestand ends on January. January 5th at home, 2.30 on Sunday, January 5th against the Boston Celtics, the defending champions. Reigning champs coming into this building. You're not going to want to miss that one. And yeah. I love the I love the 2.30 tip time. So that's fun. That's just so great. Um, very family friendly, yeah. of course, but also uh, just great vibes in the, so in the arena. I mean, everybody's just got tons of energy, um, yeah. you know, being up that early, either just, you know, 
just left church or just left lunch or whatever they're doing and, yeah. and you're heading to the arena and getting ready to rock. So um, that game, that game should be really fun. Another thing to point out about January, Nick, I don't know about you, but looking at this January calendar, so much less intimidating <laughs> than in years past. This is my sixth season with the Thunder and every year prior leading up to this, I have looked at January and just been like, Oh boy. Okay. We're going to need to buckle yeah, up. Not going to be home. I think <laughs> yeah. last year it was like 11 road games, five home games yes. or something like yes. that. Yes. And yeah. we were all mm. over the place. Yeah. On every the road. time zone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every time zone, extended trips. And there's a lot of white space on the calendar this <laughs> yes. time, which is nice. Yeah. A lot of breathing room. Yeah. And so there are only three back to backs in January seven at home, seven on the road. And it includes a nice four game kind of East Coast road trip yeah. where the Thunder will play the Cavs, the Knicks, the Wizards, and the 76ers. So a lot less daunting for the yeah. Thunder going into that January stretch. And you mentioned the back-to-backs. There's actually 16 of them on the Thunder schedule this year. Yeah. 16, quite a quite a few. Um, but four of them are home-home back-to-backs, uh, which is pretty cool. One of those is at the beginning of that month of January where you got the Clippers and then the Knicks coming yeah. in on a Thursday and a Friday night in Oklahoma City. That should be pretty fun. I mean, two you know great opponents that are going to be coming into this building, um, and you get a chance to see them on back to back nights. So keep a lookout for those home home back to backs. Four out of the sixteen. Looking ahead now into February, the Thunder starts February with a four game home stand, which is very nice. But to your point about looking at the schedule in a kind of a two week stretch. Yeah kind of layout. The Thunder has the all-star break from the 14th through the 19th in February, but leading into that all-star break might be a little bit of a grind for OKC. Yeah, take a look. I mean, there's two back-to-backs in the span of a week yeah. in that stretch. So you basically... You and know, you home got, road right, back-to-backs. Right. Yeah. So you got five games and seven nights, and then that last game before the all-star break is is that Thursday night. It's a TNT exclusive yeah. at Minnesota. And then, you know, who knows what contingent might be going to San Francisco for right. the All-Star Weekend there at Chase Center. Um, and then you're coming back and you're right in the mix again at the end of February. That starts a stretch of five out of seven games on the road. And the two home games are on the second nights of back-to-backs for the Thunder. So yeah. that is a really grueling stretch in February right there for the Thunder even with the all-star break in the middle. A really good test of character here because you're going to have to really work on recovering during the Mm all-star break, try to get as much rest as you can because you really do hit the ground running post all-star break leading into what looks to be a pretty busy March for the Thunder compared to years prior. You've got 16 games in 31 days, three back-to-backs, and that includes this Fun little mini series right there in the <laughs> second week of March, March 9th and March 10th, back to back games at home against the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, there's a few of these stretches where, and, and there's one in, in the end of February too, where the Thunder's yeah. playing at Minnesota and then at home against Minnesota. This one that you're talking about is Denver, Denver, both in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Kind of wild that the Thunder is, you know, dealing with a big divisional rival right. in that fashion. Both times that the, the Nuggets are going to have to play in Oklahoma City happen to be in that one stretch. Um, you know, There's just so many subplots that can come from that. Right. What if somebody's injured over that two-day stretch? That completely changes the dynamic of those games exactly. if, in, in comparison to if they're spaced out. Um, but that's the schedule. I mean, that this is. is. This, every team <laughs> is dealing with stuff like this. Yes. Um, and it's so interesting to just see how it all kind of flows and lays out. I mean, these situations, while this schedule is obviously unique to the Thunder, yeah. every team is dealing with their own kind of faces of adversity and challenges. Right. And so keeping that in mind, because when you get into March, you get into April, that is start that starts to become crunch time leading into the playoffs. And for OKC, they'll end the season actually on a three-game road trip out West facing the Phoenix Suns, the Utah. Utah Jazz yeah. and the New Orleans Pelicans. And just one thing to add about sort of that grueling stretch in March, mm-hmm. and then you head into the final days of the season on the road, which starts with the second night of a back to back. This is why the Thunder has built a roster that has great depth to it mm-hmm. and has, you know, really leaned in as a coaching staff and development staff to playing so many of its guys and yeah. keeping them all fresh, keeping them all game ready, keeping them engaged in the rotation because throughout the course of a tough 82 game season, there are definitely going to be times where you need every single player exactly. to be able to stand up and deliver. Be on the lookout for that over the course of the season because that's how the Thunder can stay fresh throughout the year. I mean, how many times last season was it 
a different guy every single night for the Thunder, whether it was a Aaron Wiggins game yeah. or a big Isaiah Joe game or a big Jay Will game, Jalen Williams. Mm-hmm. I mean, those sort of things, that is exactly why, to your point, the Thunder really works on integrating these guys throughout the regular season, mixing up those lineups, trying to see who can be what for what point in the season. And so this will be a really good test, especially during that stretch, to see who who steps up, who rises to the challenge there. Yeah, I mean, I'll never forget the the game the game winner that J Dub had against Portland yeah. at home last season. You know, there were two way guys who were jumping in to to that game and just making some plays, and every little bit counted because the Thunder, you know, was coming back on the mm-hmm. second night of a back to back really tough stretch that it had right before then and needed every ounce of juice that it could get and could squeeze out of the roster That's right. to be able to win that game. <laughs> and, you know, that ends up getting you the number one seed in the Western Conference. Yep. Winning, you know, winning one game um, was the difference between, you know, the one seed and the three seed in that scenario. So, and those yeah. guys playing in those moments allowed them to feel very confident playing rotation minutes right. during very important playoff games, very meaningful basketball games. And so all of this stuff during the regular season, obviously it's fun, it's action-packed, yeah. But boy, these guys are putting in work during the regular season to gear up for that postseason, which, as we all know, they are very, very hungry for. Yes. And, you know, as Sam Presti has talked about, like this team want, wanted to not just make an appearance in the playoffs. Exactly. So this is this season is now really um, about what can the Thunder replicate what it did last year yep. in a meaningful way, not yeah. just cut corners to try to get results, but can they invest the way that they did last year? Can they um, lean in even deeper to their core identity and you know make that totally second nature and be able to get the car back on the road very quickly um, in those times of slippage? It is going to be such a fun season. Yeah. And like we've been kind of in tune with these guys, seeing their workouts during yeah. the off season, putting on cams, putting in work during the Olympics. And you know these guys are just so, so excited to get back into the gym together because one thing we know about the Thunder, they love being around each yes. other. Yeah. These guys are like brothers. <laughs> they genuinely love being around one another. And so it'll be really fun come kind of September, right yeah. after Labor Day, when these guys get back into market to see all of these guys back in the gym. Yeah, and the Thunder announced the preseason schedule as well. Right. Obviously, they you know these games don't end up counting in the final standings, <laughs> but um, at the Spurs... Houston Rockets at home, Mm -hmm. New Zealand Breakers um, up in Tulsa at the Denver Nuggets and then at home against the Atlanta Hawks. Kind of ironic that two of the teams, the Thunder's going to turn around and play play right at the the beginning (laughs) of the season. Actually, all three, you know, Spurs, Denver, Hawks, the Thunder all play in their first four um, games games of the season. (laughs) They've got them all in the preseason as well. So maybe a little bit of a tune up there um, and a chance for those teams to to get to know each other. So um, that'll be good. And obviously every year the Thunder plays a game out in Tulsa, always such a fun environment to get to that market and really feel the energy of that Tulsa atmosphere in the BOK center. The gratitude that we feel from the fans there Mm -hmm. is really, really special. And something that always stands out to me when we're there is the sheer amount of time that Shea in particular spends signing autographs oh goodness, there. Yeah. He recognizes that a lot of those folks from Tulsa, they would love to be able to be in Paycom Center, yeah. you know, 41 nights out of the year. Just not possible. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, it's an hour and a half drive. It's just sometimes a little bit too much for people to be able to make. So he realizes like, those people, they are diehard Thunder fans yeah. too, and they'd be there if they could. This is their one chance every year to do it. Always yeah. so grateful every time that that group gets a chance to go up to Tulsa, and we obviously enjoy it too. It's really fun to see all of those faces out there. But that that's the schedule for you. That's it. It's action-packed. Yeah. There's a lot packed in there, but definitely going to be an awesome season to watch this Thunder team in action. So be sure Get your calendar, mm-hmm. circle the dates that you want to be there, and then, of course, go to OKCThunder.com for all the extra information that you need when it comes to tickets and things like that. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much to our producer, Matt Bishop. And until next time, Thunder up and catch you later. <laughs>